Hi, this is Tommy's Piano Corner and I'm Tommy. Have you ever wondered why sometimes it can take ever so long to get something right, no matter how hard you seem to practice? I was actually quite surprised to find out that more often than not, the reason it does take me so long is because I spend a lot of my time practicing playing it wrong. In this video, I'd like to share some ideas of how we can stop ourselves from falling into this trap. Are you sitting comfortably? Then let's begin. Graham Fitch, in his series on practicing the piano, which I highly recommend, and I've put a link to it below for you, quotes a famous concert pianist in his words of the last generation, who, when asked why he never played any wrong notes, just simply responded, well, because I never practice any. That might sound dismissive at first, but if we agree that repetition is the mother of all learning, which is, after all, a Latin phrase, so there's bound to be some truth in it, then you're not actually starting to practice something until the notes that you play in are the right ones. If during your practice sessions you simply spend time playing through and repeating lots and lots of wrong notes, then actually what you're really doing is practicing how to play it wrong and not practicing how to play it right. So you're not learning the piece at all. I've been working on Chopin's Minute Waltz for a couple of years on and off now, I guess. And probably for the last year, I've had it to a stage where on a good day, the stars align and I can pull off an almost passable rendition of it. However, unfortunately, the, those days are few and far between. But once I'm at this level, this for me is the real danger zone. Because in actual fact, what I then have a tendency to do, even though I try to stop myself, is that I think, oh, I can now play this so I can keep playing it through. And what I do is I keep playing it through, wrong notes and all, and keep then reinforcing all of those wrong notes. So let's take one small example, and there are a few examples in this piece, but there's a point where the left hand plays, you know, a very simple A-flat-7 chord. And many times I found that I was missing the C at the top of that chord in my left hand. Now, in the context of the rest of the piece, this chord is actually probably one of the simplest of chords to play. Quite because there's, there's not really any jump involved, there's not any stretch involved. You're just adding one more note onto a hand position where you already are, so it should be simple. And I think because of this, I'd always sort of glossed over the problem and thought, yeah, I'll fix that later, I'll fix that later, it won't take long to do. The answer to not practicing wrong notes is, of course, to simplify. And this is nothing new. We've all heard these things before. Simplification can be anything. It can be hand-separate practice. It can be slow practice. It can be rhythmic variance. It can be using block chords rather than arpeggios. There are lots and lots of different variations that we can use. If you watch my video on playing a waltz in 4-4 time, Effectively, this was just a simplification strategy also. It added an extra beat per bar to give my brain a little bit of time to catch up and work out what to do next. Let's face it, there are certain things that are true, aren't there? If you can't play something hands separately, then you're not going to be able to play it hands together. If you can't play something slowly, then you're not going to be able to play it quickly. If you're using the block chords technique, if you can't do the block chords, then you're not going to master the arpeggios. So all of these things help us to work out where we need to focus our time. So let's look in detail at the left hand problem section that I had. To be honest here, the really big problem now is because I ignored these wrong notes for so, so long, you know, maybe more than a year, that now trying to fix it 
is costing me hours and hours and hours of hard work that would have been really unnecessary if I just focused on not playing the wrong notes in the first place. In my first stage of diagnosis, while I was trying to work out what I needed to fix, I decided to just simply go back to hand separately to start with. What I found was that my left hand was random, to say the least. It rarely hit the C, if indeed it hit any of the notes. And I think, you know, previously I'd sort of ignored it a little bit because it didn't seem to be a very hard place that would need a lot of extra work. Unless it was at a really slow tempo, but then really my thumb just never ever hit that C at all. So I worked on that for quite some time until I found that hands separately, it was sort of all right. I could play it and I was getting it reliably correct. So I then put it back together, hands together. And what I found was it just simply fell apart completely. So then I thought, right, well, I'd better keep it hands together now, but slow it down a lot. What I noticed when playing it slowly was that your thumb in the left hand plays the C natural pretty much immediately after your right hand has just played it. So as I increased the tempo, for some reason, almost subconsciously, it was as if my left hand was scared it was going to run into my right hand, and rather than play the C, it would hesitate and then miss it. So then what I did was I started exercising that one particular bar with both hands, speeding it up quite quickly and stopping at the B flat so that you're actually stopping at the point where both hands strike the keys together where the C naturally is played. Then once I'd managed to fix that, I started playing through the piece again and I found that it was still falling apart. By the time I got to that particular bar from playing at the beginning, then the mistake came back again. And I had seen a video of something similar about this on YouTube and, and what this guy was saying is effectively, you once you've corrected a mistake, especially an ingrained mistake like that, you then need to practice putting it back into its context. So what I then started doing, and I'm still doing now, is practicing from quite a couple of bars before that, from the, the run down, to keep it right back into its context and make sure I do it more reliably. So, I hope you found that useful, and I hope it's something you'll be able to try in your own practice sessions. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe, and don't forget also the notification bell so that you get notified of any new videos released. Thanks for listening.